Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the benefits of meditation. This will be in the sciences and as usual, oh, you know what? I might even put it with the Foundations for Wellness, the playlist you can check on my YouTube site. There's a bunch of playlists that might suit you fancy. This is from Healthline. Dot com. I do not see the author uh, written by Matthew Thorpe, MD, PhD. This is uh, 12 science-based benefits of meditation. Now, as usual, I'll read the article word for word. I might inject a couple of things here and there, and I'll put a link in the description to the actual article. So first off, my history with this is, when I was younger, I started noticing something wrong with uh, my mother and mental illness, and as the years went on, I got into it, and we're talking about 13 years old. By the time I'm 16, I'm reading as much as I can, getting books from the library, from people going to colleges and schools, anything I can get my hands on. Since then, I've been really into it, really focused on human behavior, uh, cognitive functions, lots of things have to do with the mind. And along the way, I came across meditation. And it wasn't until maybe the late 80s, listening to Howard Stern, talking about transcendental meditation, which is not particularly my style, which I like, but there were plenty out there. And I was really practicing it. And one of the things is you can't force it, so it's, you know, it's one of those things that's a little difficult to get into, but it is totally worth it, in my opinion. Now, these are um, benefits of meditation, and if you wanted to, I think it has links highlighted, but you can actually see and look into the studies that uh, show some of these benefits and how they work. So I'll begin. Meditation is the habitual process of training your mind to focus and redirect your thoughts. The popularity of meditation is increasing as more people discover its many health benefits. You can use it to increase awareness of yourself and your surroundings. Many people think of it as a way to reduce stress and develop concentration. People also use the practice to develop other beneficial habits and feelings, such as a positive mood and outlook, self-discipline, healthy sleep patterns, and even increased pain tolerance. This article reviews 12 benefits of meditation. 1. Reduce stress. Stress reduction is one of the most common reasons people try meditation. One review concluded that meditation lives up to its reputation for stress reduction. Normally, mental and physical stress can cause increased levels of the stress hormone cortisol. This produces many of the harmful effects of stress, such as the release of inflammatory chemicals called cytokines. Or cytokines? I don't know. These effects can disrupt sleep, promote depression and anxiety, increase blood pressure, and contribute to fatigue and cloudy thinking. In an eight-week study, a meditation style called mindful meditation reduced the inflammation response caused by stress. Furthermore, research has shown that meditation may also improve symptoms of stress-related conditions, including irritable bowel syndrome, post-traumatic stress disorder, and fibro... <laughs> Fibromyalgia, this is probably the highlight of these articles as I read them and can't pronounce words. Fibromyalgia 2. Controls anxiety. Meditation can reduce stress levels, which translates to less anxiety. A meta-analysis including nearly 1,300 adults found that meditation may decrease anxiety, Notably, this effect was strongest in those with the highest levels of anxiety. Also, 
One study found that eight weeks of mindful meditation helped reduce anxiety symptoms in people with generalized anxiety disorder, along with increasing positive self-statements and improving stress reactivity and coping. By the way, I'll interject here. As I'm describing them, the article has highlighted words, um, numbers that these all lead to studies and some of the um, actual uh, people who do them. Uh, another study in 47 people with chronic pain found that completing an eight-week meditation program led to noticeable improvements in depression, anxiety, and pain over one year. What's more, some research suggests that a variety of mindfulness and meditation exercises may reduce anxiety levels. For example, yoga has been shown to help people reduce anxiety. This is likely due to the benefits from both meditative practice and physical activity. I was going to do something on yoga, by the way. Um, because of my weight and build, I need to lead up to yoga. But for people who are um, generally in, in a better shape, yoga is really good. Really lots of benefits. So I looked into it a little bit and tried it out here and there. But it, for me, it has to be something that I gradually get up to with some of the exercises I'm doing now, and then, but I would recommend it wholeheartedly. Meditation may also help control job-related anxiety. One study found that employees who used a mindfulness meditation app for eight weeks experienced improved feelings of well-being and decreased distress and job strain compared with those in a control group. Again, you'll see a link. It's a little number. Number three, promotes emotional health. Some forms of meditation can lead to improved self-image and a more positive outlook on life. For example, one review of treatments given to more than 3,500 adults found that mindful meditation improves symptoms of depression. Similarly, a review of 18 studies showed that people receiving meditation therapies experienced reduced symptoms of depression compared with those in a control group. Another study found that people who completed a meditation exercise experienced fewer negative thoughts in response to viewing negative images compared with those in a control group. Furthermore, inflammatory chemicals called cytokines, which are released in response to stress, can affect mood, leading to depression. A review of several studies suggests meditation may reduce depression by decreasing levels of these inflammatory chemicals. 4. Enhances self-awareness. Some forms of meditation may help you develop a stronger understanding of yourself, helping you grow into your best self. For example, self-inquiry meditation explicitly aims to help you develop a greater understanding of yourself and how you relate to those around you. Other forms teach you to recognize thoughts that may be harmful or self-defeating. The idea is that you gain greater awareness of your thought habits. You can steer them towards more constructive patterns. One review of 27 studies showed that practicing Tai Chi may be associated with improved self-efficacy, which is a term used to describe a person's belief in their own capacity or ability to overcome challenges. In another study, 153 adults who used a mindfulness meditation app for two weeks experience reduced feelings of loneliness and increased social contact compared with those in a control group. Additionally, experience in meditation may cultivate a more problem-solving skills. Again, I'll interject here. This is a big thing coming up now. Um, mindfulness apps. I haven't really looked into them that much except for um, Sam Harris has a... Uh, waking up podcast and he talked about an app he was developing and at that time i looked into it a little bit but i'm i'm really uh almost on the verge of promoting it or um giving it the uh, seal of approval in a sense where it can't be bad so i'm going to look more into these mindfulness apps meditation apps but that's really impressive what you can do now with technology 
I could just wait to the day that you're wearing a watch that's a whole medical diagnostic. And Anyway, I'll continue. Five, lengthens attention span. Focused attention meditation is like weightlifting for your attention span. It helps increase the strength and endurance of your attention. For example, one study found that people who listened to a meditation tape experienced improved attention and accuracy while completing a task, compared with those in a control group. A similar study showed that people who regularly practiced meditation performed better on a visual task and had greater attention span than those without any meditation experience. Moreover, one review concluded that meditation may even reverse patterns in the brain that contribute to mind-wandering, worrying, and poor attention. Even meditating for a short period each day may benefit you. One study found that meditating for just 13 minutes daily enhanced attention and memory after 8 weeks. Imagine you doing that on the regular. And I totally... I'm a firm believer in meditation, but not the bullshit. Maybe I'll get that to the end. I'll save that, but... Six, may reduce age-related memory loss. Improvements in attention and clarity of thinking may help keep your mind young. Kirtan Kriya... Did I say that right? Is a method... Kirtan Kriya is a method of meditation that combines a mantra or chant with repetitive motion of the fingers to focus your thoughts. Study, studies in people with age-related memory loss have shown it improves performance on a neurophysiological test. Furthermore, a review found preliminary evidence that multiple meditation styles can increase attention, memory, and mental quickness in older volunteers. In addition to fighting normal age-related memory loss, meditation can at least partially improve memory in patients with dementia. It can likewise help control stress and improve coping in those caring for family members with dementia. And that's interesting right there. You're trying to treat somebody with dementia, but what about the person who's going through that and helping that person with dementia? Truly um, uh, important distinction there. Seven, can generate kindness. Some types of meditation may partially increase positive feelings and actions towards yourself and others. Metta, a type of meditation also known as loving-kindness meditation, begins with developing kind thoughts and feelings towards yourself. Through practice, people learn to extend this kindness and forgiveness externally, first to friends, then acquaintances, and ultimately, enemies. A meta-analysis of 22 studies on this form of meditation demonstrated its ability to increase people's compassion towards themselves and others. One study in 100 adults randomly assigned to a program that included loving-kindness meditation found that these benefits were, were dose-dependent. In other words, the more time people spent in weekly meta-meditation practice, the more positive feelings they experienced. Another study and 50 college students showed that practicing meta meditation three times per week improved positive emotions, interpersonal interactions, and understanding of others after four weeks. These benefits also appear to accumulate over time with the practice of loving kindness meditation. I'm going to get to something at the end here, but I'm making a little mental note and interjecting. This is why when I, mean, I didn't do it so well, but one of my first podcast was the foundation for wellness and it was the method i used to help family and friends and people i love or just anybody who asks for it really um and it's a combination of a lot of these things number eight may help fight addictions the mental discipline you can develop through meditation may help you break dependencies by increasing your self-control and awareness of triggers for addictive behaviors. Research has shown that meditation may help people learn to redirect their attention, manage their emotions and impulses, and increase their understanding of the causes behind their uh, behind their addiction. 
One study in 60 people receiving treatment for alcohol use disorder found that practicing transcendental meditation was associated with lower levels of stress, psychological distress, alcohol cravings, and alcohol use after three months. Meditation may also help you control food cravings. A review of 14 studies found mindful meditation helped participants reduce emotion, emotional and binge eating. That's interesting. Nine improves sleep. Nearly half of the population will struggle with insomnia at some point. And by the way, I've had problems. Well, not problems. I don't consider it a problem, but just sleeping has never been my thing. One study compared mindful meditation based programs found that people who meditated stayed asleep longer and had improved insomnia severity compared by those who had an unmedicated control condition. Becoming skilled in meditation may help you control or redirect the racing or runaway thoughts that often lead to insomnia. Additionally, it can help relax your body. Releasing tension and placing you in a peaceful state in which you are more likely to fall asleep. 10. Helps control pain. Your perception of pain is connected to your state of mind, and it can be elevated in stressful conditions. Some research suggests that incorporating meditation into your routine can be beneficial for controlling pain. For example, one review of 38 studies concluded that mindful meditation could reduce pain, improve quality of life, and decrease symptoms of depression in people with chronic pain. A large meta-analysis of studies enrolling nearly 3,500 participants concluded that meditation was associated with decreased pain. Meditators and non-meditators experienced the same causes of pain, but meditators showed a greater ability to cope with pain and even experienced a reduced sensation of pain. I watched a bunch of videos uh, with uh, some lectures on this. I'm like... By the way, when I get to the end, this is not a cure-all for everybody, but it's a tool people can use. Number 11. Can decrease blood pressure. Meditation could also improve physical health by reducing strain on the heart. Over time, high blood pressure makes the heart work harder to pump blood, which can lead to poor heart function. High blood pressure also contributes to atherosclerosis, or a narrowing of the arteries, which can lead to heart attack and stroke. A meta-analysis of 12 studies enrolling nearly 1,000 participants found that meditation helped reduce blood pressure. This was more effective among older volunteers and those who had higher blood pressure prior to the study. One review concluded that several types of meditation produced similar improvements in blood pressure. In part, Meditation appears to control blood pressure by relaxing the nerve signals that coordinate heart function, blood vessel tension, and the fight-or-flight response that increase alertness in stressful situations. Twelve. Accessible anywhere. People practice many different forms of meditation, much of which don't require specialized equipment or space. You can practice with just a few minutes daily. If you want to start meditating, try choosing a form of meditation based on what you want to get out of it. There are two major styles of meditation. Focus attention meditation. This style concentrates on attention on a single object, thought, sound, or visualization. It emphasizes Ridding your mind of distractions. Meditation may focus on breathing, a mantra, or calming sound. Open monitoring meditation. This style encourages broadened awareness of all aspects of your environment, train of thought, and sense of self. It may include becoming aware of suppressed thoughts, feelings, or impulses. To find out which styles you like best, Check out the variety of free guided meditation exercises offered by the University of California, Los Angeles. It is an excellent way to try different styles and find one that suits you.
If your regular work and home environments do not allow for consistent, quiet alone time, consider participating in a class. This can also improve your chances of success by providing a supportive community. Alternatively, consider setting your alarm a few minutes early to take advantage of quiet time in the morning. This may help you develop a consistent habit and allow you to start the day positively. The bottom line. Meditation is something everyone can do to improve their mental and emotional health. You can do it anywhere without special equipment or memberships. Alternatively, meditation courses and support groups are widely available. There's a great variety of styles too, each with different strengths and benefits. Trying out a style of meditation suited to your goals is a great way to improve your quality of life, even if you only have a few minutes to do it each day. And that's the end of the article. So, as I said, I'll put the link in the description. I'll briefly talk again about what I set out to do. So, in from 2009-ish, I had this idea to... Um, uh, write a book, and it was a fantasy novel, and that I published 2012. And over the time, meeting my fiance, and um, she was a physician's assistant, we had discussed things, you know, just getting to know each other and falling in love. Over the course of the relationship, we got to, you know, talk about the things and meditation and all the things I was into, she was into, you know how to deal with girls. But over the time, when she was diagnosed with cancer, it was a long battle, 13 years that ended, and she's no longer with us. But in developing help for her, for myself, coping with it, going through what I did as a child growing up, and yeah, I didn't go to school and get a degree, but I tried to look at all the help out there, all the tips out there, and do podcasts on it. And a part of it was also a creative aspect from writing my book. So that's why I started the YouTube channel and started podcasting. One was a promise to her, as she said I was really good at it, and um, I always helped my friends and people, even uh, her family, and little things that she would notice. And we were together for 17 years. So... That's why I do this in a way. And don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit here and say if I get 4 million subscribers, I'm not going to be happy as shit. Fine, you know. But this is a discipline for me. It's a, it's, um, a way for me to uh, do something a little creative and at times do what I set out to do was give information to help people. So the way I look at it is these are tools we can use that you can use and should teach others. So my idea of a, a world getting better is teaching children how to breathe, meditate from the right age. They can deal with everything as they grow up. They'll have a tool. Now, this doesn't work for everybody. It's not a cure and all be all thing. There are outliers to everything. But when you look at the research, and if you notice, this isn't just one study or two. These are analysis on studies in general. They take all these studies and put them together. And you can check them out, legitimate. I think the site even says this article was checked 18 times. So I try, I mean, look, we all could flub, make a mistake. There are some things I don't like about the aspects of everything. So there's this bullshit, um, and I think Buddhism and things like that, and the aspects of things that I like. But when you start getting into this, oh, I could survive on sunlight for three months or six months without food and water. You're a bullshitter. You're a liar. And if you're deluded enough to believe you can do it, fine. If you're medi uh, levitating while meditating, you're just bullshitting. Now, I say that until it's shown to me to be proven, but it's not. Or it hasn't been to this point. And... In hoping that uh, superpowers and everybody can get abilities, which I try to do every day. I'm a big superhero. I play role-playing superhero games and all that stuff. I do dislike the smearing of, like, meditation. It's why, like, going to a psychiatrist is uh, frowned upon as a stigma. Because from great minds like Freud and people like that, 
the wrong lessons were learned and a whole generation more than one maybe just flooded the world with garbage nonsense psycho babble and meditation got caught up in that i believe you're not going to be able to do these insane things and there are some benefits that are scientifically proven so i totally recommend meditating and when i do my own foundations for wellness it was my way of saying first train the body so it doesn't feel like work so i recommend as many times a day as you can remember to breathe in through your nose slowly three to five seconds let it out through your mouth five to eight seconds and depending on how much you know you might have issues the basic uh premises to breathe in slowly through your nose but let it out longer through your mouth this will be your focus your balance and for me if it was the you know there are tons of these things it might even be called the power breath and things like that but this is like for me what working with people and seems to be the easiest way so you practice this while you're doing the dishes or you're getting on the train before you get in your car before you greet your children walk home from work before you get the idea for the phone you answer the phone you train your body to do this and you'll get this natural instinctive breath and once you do that then you can open yourself up and it's at least a tool and once we get enough tools that fit you some will work for you some might not but it's time to not think of these things as you know silly type of things that can't help and i think it's uh got again caught up with this you know this trend of taking things and um spreading the bullshit about it when there's real scientific facts that are beneficial so this was the benefits of meditation with 12 of them there's a lot of links in these articles that show the studies that show the testing and whatever they did i think there's a real need for this in this day and age uh, like i said i would love to see uh, there was a couple of new learning i don't want to call them institutions but learning foundation type places that do studies one has been done over a long time now and they're showing that going to school like public schools and all this stuff is not the right way that there's a better way maybe it's, a, it's okay and it's worked but there's a better way where we can teach kids from a young age and i'm talking about knowing the uh the developmental stages of a, a brain like we know things like how babies can uh learn things and touch and sense and as the brain develops they start you know getting a deep understanding and blah 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 you pair that with breathing meditation exercises teaching them about their thoughts giving them a little bit of tools of like cognitive behavior therapy and using a lot of this in conjunction with each other which is like what my foundation for wellness was it's a way of breathing first training your body breathing meditation knowing it's going to break knowing that you're not going to be able to hold it for a certain amount of time and then what tools can you use to transmute these feelings to take these negative angry triggers and thoughts and train your body to neutralize them on a almost subconscious level anyway this is my i guess um one of my priorities on the channel which is why i do the sciences and foundations for wellness sort of stuff and i hope you enjoy it again this was the benefits of meditation from healthline.com i'll put the links in everybody i hope you're doing well go get help if you need it speak to a professional get in touch if you need to my best to you and yours